looking at quiet conditions on the Great Plains for this Wednesday. But yesterday we had quite a bit of storm activity across the northeast U.S. into Virginia. There it is, big cluster of high winds from pretty much the border of western Virginia all the way to the Chesapeake. And then we had another cluster of severe weather from northern Louisiana into central Mississippi into Alabama. Nine confirmed tornado reports, most of those early on in Mississippi. And let's start out checking that cluster there in Virginia. And this starts out about 7.30 a.m. And we're going to take a look at a couple of complexes later in the morning. This one right here in northwestern West Virginia and the southern one down to the south. This one ended up tracking into D.C. The other moved across the bulk of Virginia, and both of those produced high winds. And there they go. That's about where we were at yesterday when we did the video. And about that point, most of the damage was over. Not much overnight, but we did get a weak line of thunderstorms developing around 5 or 6 a.m. So more rain for the D.C. area this morning. And even with cold air advection and dry air moving in, there was another round that got started around early this afternoon. And at this time, that's moving off into Delaware and the Delmarva. Here's what that area looked like around 1130 this morning. Now this is pretty Typical cold air advection, some moisture aloft. You can see very little in the way of low clouds, and everything is moving towards the east. However, you can see some convective elements in these gravity waves. Those gravity waves are aligned north-south. And another feature is this, I'm not sure if that's a weak front or maybe an old outflow boundary, Anyway, it is something linear down there at the surface, and that actually becomes significant because as the day goes on, it looks like we get some enhanced convection near that boundary right there. So we would probably want to go to the surface chart and analyze that a little bit more to see what that is. Hmm, well, let's take a look. Yeah, it does look like there's some sort of front through there, and I think that's going to run roughly like that. You see that if we actually analyze the streamlines, they're going to run something like that. And that will contrast with these southwesterly winds we have in Virginia in the area south of Washington, D.C. So those storms developing right in that region and tracking right along that boundary. And the boundary, of course, is drifting to the south. So overall, that's going to mean a movement more like that. And as the day goes on, some very ragged but vigorous convection around the Washington, D.C. area. And, of course, that focuses on that boundary extending out towards Dover. And as the rest of the afternoon goes on, we start getting the anvils. And that's where the storms are actually starting to mature. And they're moving rapidly off to the east and Probably by the time you watch this show, those storms should be out to sea. Around 7 a.m., we see this disorganized region of thunderstorms in northern Mississippi and Alabama. That doesn't really do very much. You can see what looks like a boundary or a front moving southward. But the main wave is coming out of Texas. And that one is much faster moving, reflecting the strong upper air dynamics. And that comes together. You see a really big MCS develop. And that's when we had those tornadoes forming around the Jackson area. That, again, that was early on, later in the day, not as much in the way of tornadic activity, though the wind gusts were definitely strong most of the afternoon. And we had that spectacular bow echo. We saw that in yesterday's stream. That's the apex right there. And the severe weather started diminishing just a little bit as that pushed into Georgia. And that's where we were at about 10 p.m. You can see that the higher reflectivities start abating a little bit and pretty good trailing stratiform region and not much left by early this morning. 
So what happened today? Well, obviously, we've got cold air advection and dry air coming in the backside. So that's going to shut things down, but still a little bit of activity there along the Gulf Coast. Got this weak little MCS there around Apalachicola, and I would expect that would probably move into the Tampa area this evening. Well, the hazards are a little bit weaker compared to yesterday. Marginal risk for that outgoing complex there in the D.C. region. And we've got this marginal risk on the Great Plains with a weak cold front pushing southward. Got the mesoscale discussions out for that. This one closer to the Bear Clinic low and this one near the leading edge of the cold front. However, no watches in effect. The satellite loop around 9 a.m. this morning shows what looks like convective debris around the Concordia to Great Bend area, another little region around Woodward. Can't see that front moving to the south. Conditions are dry in the low levels. However, running that forward, now it's starting to emerge. You can see what looks like a little boundary right there and some northerly flow being indicated. Looks like maybe some early towers going up around the Palmer Divide down towards Colorado Springs. This is around noon mountain time, 1 p.m. Central. And the thunderstorms do go up. Nothing too impressive. Looks like mushy anvils. And those are organized along the length of that front. And then we play that out to the current time. The storms continue moving to the southeast. And they continue developing, but we're not expecting much severe weather. And you can see the low cloud field out ahead of it is non-existent, which to me indicates high bases. Now the low cloud field is a little bit more established out around Dodge City down towards Perryton, Canadian. But this is the low down looking at the surface chart. We can certainly find that front very easily. That's running about like that. But we see that the dew points are quite low. 30s and 40s, which to me indicates bases up near six to 8,000 feet, maybe even higher. The highest dew points I'm finding looks like 48 at Russell, 50 at Liberal. So very scanty moisture ridge right there. So there's not really any favored areas. I don't see the winds backed anywhere along the length of that boundary. So this is probably a situation you would, where you would just head out towards the tail end and kind of stick with the better pool of deep moisture. And that would probably be right there in that region. So probably a few prospects in this area. I don't know how long those are going to hold together. But if they do hold on till sunset, there could be some very spectacular colors right in that region. The other area I would watch, of course, is along the Cap Rock further south where we have some moderate cumulus. But that moisture is not very impressive either. Dew points in the mid 40s. And finally, that brings us to the surface analysis. Major Bear Clinic low departing the New Jersey coast. Associated cold front extending down the east coast towards Savannah down to about Tallahassee. And this is this secondary front that I believe was moving through the D.C. area earlier, a few hours ago. Out in the plains, there's that frontal system associated with the convection in Kansas. But once again, we see dew points confined mostly to the 40s. The moisture is so sparse that I don't even find a dry line on this surface map. And there's the old tail end of the recent push of northwestern U.S. air. That's modified quite a bit. Still hanging on to 60s in Utah and Nevada. Still have a northeast wind at Las Vegas. So I am carrying that front on the surface chart. Doesn't look like any trace of it down around Phoenix or Tucson or Thermal. So that pretty much justifies keeping that front right in that region. And we can see that the San Joaquin Valley temperature is coming up quite a bit, up into the mid-80s. And then just a quick check of Canada. Looks about like it did yesterday. 
warming up, starting to see some above freezing temperatures all the way up into the, I'm not sure what area that would be, southeast of Cambridge Bay and 40s. Actually, yeah, 40s all the way up towards Great Slave Lake and whatever lake that is. <laughs> Great Bear Lake, I can't remember the lake names, but anyway, that's how things look in Canada. So we should go ahead and check out Europe as well. Not too many viewers care about Europe, but some of our viewers do. So we'll just kind of quickly go through this. Looks like a very deep 987 millibar low in southern Sweden and down there around Copenhagen, wrapped up into the North Sea. And that looks like another push of cold air. It looks like the far northern Atlantic Basin is very heavy with cold air outbreaks. So that's another one. UK still in the 40s this evening. And that cold air extending all the way down into Germany and France. Not much warm air to be seen except in Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria. A few 70s showing up in that region. But for the most part, most of Europe is fairly cool. And coming back into the U.S. for the forecast, I think the most appropriate chart to use is precipitable water. We've had a series of cold air outbreaks, pushed the tropical air southward, and that's mostly sitting offshore out in the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico. Very little of it on the continental United States itself. Now we do have one and a half to two inch precipitable waters all the way from western Florida back to Texas. When is that going to come northward? Well, not right now. We've got high pressure on the Great Plains, and that's providing a northerly gradient, which will keep the flow of moisture pushed well to the south. When does it come up? Well, it looks like some of it's starting to sneak up the Rio Grande. That's a very weak northeast gradient, but that's likely going to increase as the week goes on. Let's run that forward. Well, our ridge is still pushing out to the east, but some of the moisture is starting to come up into West Texas. And it looks like we're also picking up a little bit of moisture, maybe from evapotranspiration there in northern Texas, coming up to about 0.5 to 0.75. That could be enough to work with, but you can see that the bulky, beefy tropical moisture is still out of the picture, except in Florida. This is about Thursday evening into Friday. So now it looks like we're starting to pick up some moisture. This could be coming from maybe convergence and maybe some evapotranspiration in Oklahoma and Kansas. This is going to be Friday. And now we're starting to see the tropical moisture move northward around Saturday. We have been talking about this weekend reflecting a change in the pattern and switching this off from northerly flow to southerly flow. And now we see that the southerly component is in effect, and that will bring the surge of moisture northward starting Friday night into Saturday. And I think we're going to start to see the appearance of tropical stratus moving up from San Antonio and Houston into Dallas. And we'll see the low-level jet get established and the appearance of the dry line out to the west. And with all of that, now we're going to start seeing chances for deep convection on the Great Plains. I don't exactly know where that's going to be just yet. I don't know what the cap's doing. We're going to go over that tomorrow. But we do see some vast cyclonic flow, good setup for a dry line, good setup for convergence. And depending on where the cold air mass is, we could have a jet in place over the region. Those are all good factors. So certainly some potential for storms over the weekend. I think a lot of chasers will be out there hitting the road. Another blast of cold air comes south. You can see the 10, 30 millibar high up there in Manitoba. Yeah, that's going to kick some cold air down. I don't know how far south that's going to go. Looks like that creeps all the way down to East Texas, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and the Panhandles. Let me draw that out for you. And you can see the moisture kind of piled up along that boundary. However, it's not quite pushed that all the way down to the Gulf, so that means a lot of thunderstorm chances in Texas, Louisiana for next week. Southerly flow picks back up. No, this is actually northerly flow. So, yeah, that's going to keep that frontal boundary in place until the flow switches around. And it's just not quite doing that. 
So I think next week is going to be kind of unsettled unless we are firmly capped. Another outbreak of cold air for the 18th, 19th. That's getting way out there, but uh, yeah, it still looks like a very solid pattern over the next few weeks of cold air outbreaks surging south, but those are going to gradually lose potency as we get into late spring. So that's about all I have to say for today. Just as a reminder from May 10th through around the first week of June, maybe around there, we are going to be on a different schedule. I have to go on break for a little while, but I want to give the supporters their money's worth. So I will be doing videos and severe weather coverage. So if you are a Patreon supporter, you will continue getting videos after this weekend. And by the time June rolls around, we will be back to normal. So don't worry, but I do need the break and there's books and software to get caught up on. And I'm trying to get the next edition of weather analysis and forecasting finished because I've got about 35 pages of new model information that I want to include in that book. Okay, hope you all have a great Wednesday evening, and we'll see you tomorrow for the Thursday edition. Bye-bye.